Hi guys, I thought I'd show you how to make this little tag. I've used two Funky Fossil products, the uh, Simply Stripes stencil and the Catitude stamp set. I've used the stress oxides in the background, blended from one colour to the next, and um, I've stamped in Versifying Claire. Uh, I'll give you a list of products that I've used um, at the end of this video. So to start with, you need to take a tag or cut a tag. It doesn't matter really what size. I've used six centimetres by 12 centimetres. Um, I've used quite a, a smooth surface card. So um, because I'm going to be stenciling this, I don't really want it to be wiggling around. So I pop a bit of, uh, of removable glue on the back. This is a Herma glue. Um, and just pop it down on my paper like so. I then take the stencil and position it where I want it, where I want the stamps to go. Try and align the top here so that it's level. I'll just take some masking tape. This is a low tack masking tape, which it just allows you to position your stencil and it won't rip the paper at all. So there we go. So I've just, I don't know whether you can see, but I've just positioned it just a little off the edge of the tag um, to ensure that we get the full coverage. I won't bother doing down the sides here. So to start with, I'm going to use the, the Distress Oxide Rustic Wilderness. And I'll use that with a blending tool, starting at the top. This is my preference. You may want to go a different direction. I'm going to drag the colour down. Down the tag like so. Oh, just let me get a little piece of card to, to hold it in place while I'm doing that. I don't want to leave any possible fingerprint residue on the surface. So here we go. So I'm, I'm dragging it down quite firmly. And I'm going to go to just above the midway point with this one. I'm not going across because I don't want to ruck up the lines of the stencil. I'm just following the stencil lines back and forth like so. So I'll try to keep it a deeper colour at one end and then it'll, it'll blend to a lighter colour midway and then to the lighter green again at the, at the bottom of the tag. So that's probably about where I need to be for now. I'm now taking mowed lawn distress oxide ink with another blending tool. I'm going to go from the bottom up. Just as a matter of interest, you might be hearing some grunts and some sighs in the background. That'll be Rosie, my dog. She wanted to be in the same room as me. Um, and uh, she's making herself known. Working my way up the line to try and make it a more blended green, fading into the darker, if you see what I mean. So we've got the light at the bottom and, and the dark at the top. So that's the stencil bit done. We can now lift that up. And there we go, we have that, that bit done now. Now we move on to the stamping. I prefer to use a stamping platform, but obviously different people have different preferences. So use what you prefer. 
Now, using the Funky Fossil Catitude stamp, I've decided to use this one. And I'm going to stamp him in Versafine Claire ink. It's called Nocturne, a black, a black ink. Oh, no, I think I showed you the wrong one. That's the one I'm going to use. So here he is. I'm going to position him about there. So he's overlapping most of the of the colours, but the bow from his um, from his collar will show up better on the white rather than the green. So I just put, position my magnets like that, close it up, and there we go. The, the um, stamp is now clung to the to the platform. I'm going to ink the stamp up and then flip it over onto my platform. Just give it a little bit of pressure. Lift it up. Oh, it's a little bit light there. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to go over it in a minute, but uh, we'll just do another one. And this is the benefit of using a platform is that you can restamp and it'll go exactly in the same in the same position. So you haven't got any of that element of doubt. And I'll just quickly rub my my stamp clean because I now want to stamp the same stamp on a separate piece of card. So I'm going to stamp him there. And you'll find out why in a minute. There we go. And we're there, he's beautiful. I'll just give that another wipe over there. And now while we've got the ink out, we'll do the stem the sentiment and in this set there's there's this sentiment of have a perfect day so that sounds ideal for a cat loving uh, person to go on there on their gift tag and I'll just put it a, approximately central to there there we go it's in oh, let's just pop those on there so it's There we go. Off it. There we go. So that's that stamps now perfectly. Right, so there we go. So that's the main bit of the of the tag done. Now this little uh, fella that I've stamped on the on the uh, piece of white card, I'm going to paint him. Just move it that way so I can have a bit of. Uh, I'm going to put some wild honey distress distress oxide, some spiced marmalade, and a little bit of spun sugar distress oxide and using a fine paintbrush I'm just going to take up a bit of the of the yellow test it there and I'm just going to color him in just very approximately now at this stage, it doesn't matter whether you go over the lines because we're going to be cutting this out. So even if you just want to give him a full wash of the lighter colour and then go in with the darker one, you can do. It doesn't matter whether you go over the lines or not. Um, So 
hope you're seeing this okay. If you hear the tip tappy noise, that's Rosie on the move again. She's not very happy because Chris, my hubby, has just gone out and she wants to be with him. Right, so I want to move up just a fraction darker now. And we'll make the belly a little bit lighter. Okay, so that's with the lighter colour, the wild honey. I'm now going in for detail with the spice marmalade. So I'm going to go in at the tip of his tail. read it a little bit coming down there. Okay, I'll make it a bit darker closer to the edge there. And then top of his ears coming down here, just lightly colouring in his details with the same brush bringing it round here. Pull the colour down like so, down the leg. I'm not using this brush is quite dry actually. Um, I prefer it to be like that um, rather than too saturated and I keep a piece of kitchen roll close by just to dry it off sometimes. So just to blend those colours in back to the wild honey again and just, just to make the lines softer around the face like so. I want to pull some of the colour down like that onto the belly and now going in to the sponge sugar I'm going to colour some of his belly because uh, quite often the bellies don't have much fur and there's a, you get a little pink tone also in the ears like so we'll give a bit more ears and cheeks Maybe go in with the wild honey again, just to get a bit more expression on his face. There we go. So now we've got that um, image painted. I just wipe up that surface paint and move the. Um, water out of the way just in case I knock it over and now I'm going to cut this image out um, I'll probably fast forward this bit because it'll be a bit boring to watch but as you can see I'm not being particularly careful particularly in this detail here where you see those little spikes I'm not being particularly careful with that because the detail is still on the tail here so we can actually bypass a lot of that and just follow the line down, keeping some of the black, keeping within the black line. We don't want any white edges to show. But we just follow the lines around. He's still a little bit wet at the moment. Um, so if you want to dry him off, you can give him a blast with your heat gun. Now then, 
we're coming up the leg and then where the bows are that would be in this bow area here would be impossible to cut out but because we've already got it on there it means we don't need to cut it out so that's why I prefer to do it this way I could in theory color that mask it over and then do the stenciling but this is my preferred way of doing it and you do get a nice crisp line with it as well On this way. Yeah, looks good. I don't know what it's like where you are today, but it started off here with a really heavy frost and then late morning I was taking Rosie for a walk and it started to sleet um, and it stayed pretty grey for the rest of the day and I could hear the the rain or hail or whatever it is something wet and cold anyway hitting the window so when I'm nearly there just round the pom-pom the side of the pom-pom to go to come a little bit close there. So nearly done. So there we have it. Now I'm not sure whether you can see here. Let me just pull a piece of black card. You might be able to see better. Um, there's a white edge and we don't want that white edge to show. So my way of dealing with that is to get a black sharpie and just go around the outline of the, of the cat. Now I prefer to go around the outline from the back. If you go from the front sometimes you can slip and it'll go over the edge and you don't want a bold, really really thick bold edge but you do want a defined edge and you don't want the recipient of the card or the tag to be able to really see the layers you want you don't really want them to know about the magic of how you've made it so i'm hoping you can see what i'm doing here the little white areas I'm covering up yeah all the way around that and it just gives it a nice crisp edge There we are, that's about it. So now that that's done, I've got this um, Signo Uniball um, orange glitter pen, which is sort of like orange sparkly, and it's just lovely. So what I've done on my sample that I made earlier, I've just coloured some of the some of the cat detail in the hat area in this just to give a little bit uh, more interest there we are and now we go to the glue bit of it I use a wet glue, this uh, Cosmic Shimmer glue, which I find is good for this sort of detail. Um, 
and if any does seep out the edges it does dry clear which is a, a bonus because you don't really want to be able to see splodges of glue. So I don't use a brush or anything I'll just use my finger to move the glue around. Um, particularly on those outer extremities where you don't want them to stick up and, and uh, be obvious how you've made it. So here we are, we've got the, the tag we've just made. And then we position the cat within the lines, like so. Just give a little bit of pressure. Yeah, so there's the finished tag. As you can see, I've, with my sample tag, I've mounted it onto black card and added some ribbon to it, but obviously you can do anything. Um, if you look here, I don't know whether you can see, but it's nice and secure and you've got that lovely black line. You don't see any of the white cutout line on here, which I think makes it a better make. Anyway, um, there we go. That's my first video out of the way. Um, I hope it's um, given you some tips and um, you may see me again. Bye for now.